Hello and welcome to Heart Sounds Nursing Assessment. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Let's talk a little bit about our heart sounds. So first of all, getting back to the anatomy that causes the sound itself. When you hear heart sounds and you hear a patient's when you're listening to a patient's heart and you're hearing lub dub, lub dub, it's easy for me to think of those sounds coming from the contraction. So the contraction of the atria, the contraction of the ventricle, it seems like that's what would be causing the sound. However, that's not the case. Actually, the sound comes from the closing of the valves. So as we walk our blood flow through the heart here, starting over on the left side of the heart picture, you see that blue vessel coming into the right atria. So we're actually talking about the uh, functional anatomy here when we're talking about the right side and the left side, not the right side and the left side of your screen. So the right side of the heart is over on the left side of your screen. So we have the blood coming back from the body and going to the right side of the heart. It enters the right atria, and from the right atria then, it, the right atria fills with blood, and then the right atria contracts, and it pushes the blood down into the right ventricle. Now, you'll notice that it has to go through the valve there, the tricuspid valve, to get down to the right ventricle. The right ventricle then is going to collect the blood and then contract and push the blood up through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. Notice that before it gets to the pulmonary artery, it has to go through the pulmonary valve. So we have the two valves on the right side of the heart. Now the blood goes through the lungs, comes back to the heart, and it's entering the left atria over on the right side of your screen there. And then it's going to, the right, left atria is gonna contract, it's gonna pump the blood down into the left ventricle through the mitral valve. And then the left ventricle will contract and push the blood out the aorta through the aortic valve. So we have the movement through the valves that's occurring with the contraction of our atria and our ventricle. So the atria contract and then those valves that are between the atria and the ventricle, the tricuspid and the mitral, are going to close and that starts our cycle here with heart sounds. And then we have the ventricles contract and then the aortic and pulmonic valve close and that continues our cycle here with our heart sounds. So Again, atria contract, the aortic and pulmonic valve close, and we get our S1, or our first heart sound. Then we have the ventricles contract, and we get our second heart sound coming from our mitral valve and our tricuspid valve when they close. So it's the closing of the valves that we're hearing. It's not the contraction of the heart. That part you don't hear. We're hearing the valves instead. So let's put this together with our EKG here that helps to illustrate some of the different components that are going on. So for those of you who typically look at a lot of EKGs, you'll know that the P wave represents our atrial depolarization. So the atria depolarize and contract, and then we're going to get our S1. Now notice the S1 is coming over the QRS complex. So this is kind of interesting, right? Uh, we have our Atrial depolarization there with the P wave, you'd expect your S1 to be over by the P wave, right? But remember again, it's the valves closing after the contraction that's causing the sound. So the S1 comes after atrial depolarization, S2 comes after ventricular depolarization, which is on our EKG here, represented by our QRS complex. Notice that we have a couple other sounds that are listed there as well. We have our S3 and our S4. We're gonna talk more about those two sounds as we progress. Okay, now let's listen to what an S3 heart sound sounds. Okay, now did you hear that pattern of sloshing in? So sloshing in, sloshing in, sloshing in. This particular patient had a rather fast heart rate, but you could easily hear that there was a third sound that was occurring as a result of having this S3. Now let's talk a little bit about the S4 heart sound. You notice that S4 comes before S1. That's kind of confusing, because shouldn't, shouldn't S4 come after S3? I mean, doesn't that make sense? 
that it would be after S3, but it's right before S1. I mean, technically it is coming after S3 in the cycle, but it's coming right before S1. And this is what gets confusing to people sometimes because uh, that sound is coming right before that S1. So what I was taught again was this pattern of Tennessee. So rather than listening for the term Tennessee, and it's going to sound like Tennessee, 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 I prefer to use the pattern of a stiff wall, a stiff wall, a stiff wall. So a stiff wall tells me about what's going on with the heart while I'm hearing that S4 heart sound. So again, it's coming right before S1. What's happening right before S1? Well, look at the placement of S4 there. It's happening during atrial depolarization. So the atria are contracting. They're pushing blood into a stiff ventricle because our patient has myocardial ischemia. So a new S4 is indicating that your patient has a stiff wall, which is the result of myocardial ischemia. Okay, now let's listen to what an S4 sounds like. Could you hear the pattern in there of a stiff wall, a stiff wall, a stiff wall? So in this case here, that S4 was very close to the S1, which makes sense. The atria contract, we hear the sound, and the ventricles contract immediately thereafter. So it almost sounds like we have two S1s because it's so close to that S1 in this case here. So a stiff wall, a stiff wall, a stiff wall. That's the pattern that we're going to be listening for in our patient who has an S4. So again, as a review, the S3 heart sound, it's going to be a low-pitched sound, a brief vibration. It's at the end of diastole and a rapid diastolic filling time. This is the time when blood is rushing into the heart, and we have fluid volume overload. So blood is rushing into the heart, it's overwhelming the heart, and we're getting that vibration of the valve as a result. There can be two different types of S3s. One is called physiologic X S3. This is common in those people who are younger than 40 years old. And then we can have a pathologic S3. And this would be, especially if it's a new onset. So you're listening to heart sounds this morning. You hear S1, S2, no problem. Now you're starting to hear an S3 in your patient who has heart failure, or your patient who has some kind of previous cardiac condition. I'd be concerned of fluid volume overload. If it's chronic, a chronic S3, well, first of all, that really doesn't tell you any new information anyway, but it could be caused by anything that causes ventricular dysfunction. So really a wide variety of different things that could be causing that chronic S3. The real value here is in finding that acute S3, the new onset, because that tells you about something that's happening right now that you can do something about. And on to the S4. So the S4 is a low-pitched, dull, thudding quality kind of a sound right before that S1. So during the atrial contraction, it's an atrial sound. It does not occur in atrial fib. Okay, so we're not going to have it in atrial fib because we don't have atrial contraction during atrial fibrillation. Remember, the atria are just fibrillating. They're not actually contracting. Physiologic, it can be possible in adults who are older than 50, can have a physiologic S4. Pathologic and new onset indicates that we have decreased ventricular compliance. This is what we're talking about with myocardial ischemia and myocardial infarction. So again, the real value in finding an S4 is finding that new one. You listened this morning, no S4. Now you hear an S4. Red flag, there's something going on here. And it sounds like myocardial ischemia. If it's a chronic S4, that could be caused by systemic hypertension, aortic stenosis, or chronic hypertrophy of the heart. So a variety of different heart conditions that could cause a chronic S4. The real value, again, is in finding that new onset because that tells you about something that's happening right now that you can get prompt intervention for your patient. So the takeaways are listen carefully because the S3 and S4 sounds are subtle and they're very low pitched. So it's not going to be something that's just going to grab your attention if you're not listening carefully. A new onset of an S3 indicates fluid overload. New onset of an S4 indicates cardiac ischemia. These are things that you can get prompt treatment for your patient for. So we should be listening for that new onset of S3 and S4 so that hopefully we can get the prompt treatment for our patients. 
If you'd like to learn more about nursing emergencies and try to prevent complications in your patients and detect problems in the early stages, check out our Nursing Emergencies program. You can see it at thenursingprof.com. Thank you for joining me this time for Heart Sounds Nursing Assessment. My name is David Woodruff. Until next time, bye now.